Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Yeji, like yay, G. And today I wanted to talk about three chase cards. The reason why it's called a chase trifecta is because you can hold three cards at the same time. And that three cards is gonna be like the most important cards in your wallet. And those three cards are the Sapphire cards. So either the Sapphire Reserve or the Sapphire Preferred, the Chase Freedom Unlimited and the Chase Freedom Flex. The Chase Sapphire Reserve is $550 a year but it comes with a bunch of benefits. With the Chase Sapphire Reserve, you can get 10x on hotels and car rentals purchased through Chase Travel, 5x on flights through also Chase Travel. You get 3x on general travel, which could be cruises, maybe parking lot tickets, just anything that's related to travel. You get 3x on dining, which is global dining. You get $300 travel credit every year, and you get a $100 global entry or TSA credit every four years. You get 10x with Lyft rides, and that is until March 31st of 2025, but I've seen this being extended all the time, so maybe come March 31st, 2025, they will most likely extend it again. And you also get a two-year pink membership with that. You get a $5 monthly credit of DoorDash, and you get a DoorDash Pass subscription. You get Instacart membership for 12 months and you get 10x on anything Peloton purchases related. The Sapphire Reserve is $550 a year, but it doesn't have a foreign exchange fee and it has an awesome primary coverage insurance. So when you're renting a car, you don't have to purchase extra insurance or rely on any other personal insurance. You can get primary insurance with a Chase card, which is amazing because most premium cards don't give you a primary insurance. It's normally secondary. The Sapphire Preferred is $95, and it also doesn't have any foreign exchange. It gives you 5X on hotels and car rentals purchased through the Chase Travel. You get 3X on dining and that's worldwide. You get 3X on select streaming services such as Hulu, Disney, ESPN, Netflix, Sling, Voodoo, Fubo, Apple Music, Sirius, Pandora, Spotify, YouTube, and more. You get 3x on online groceries. You get 2x on travel. You get $50 hotel credit if you purchase the hotel through Chase Portal. You get 5x on Lyft until March 2025 and you get 5x on Peloton purchases. This card also gives you 10% back if you use it on the Chase Travel Portal. Now the Freedom Unlimited and the Freedom Flex have both $0 annual fee. However, they both charge a foreign exchange, so don't use it when you're traveling abroad. The Freedom Flex gives you 5x rotating categories every quarter, so you don't know, you'll just have to wait and see what Chase says. You get 5x on travel booked through the Chase portal, you get 3x on dining, and you get 3x on drugstore purchases and the Freedom Unlimited just gives you 1.5x on every purchase. Now with Chase, there's a couple rules that you need to keep in mind. The most famous one is called the 524, meaning you can only open up five new credit cards within a 24 month period. If you open up more than five, let's say you're opening up your sixth one within two years, then they'll automatically deny you because you've opened up more than five credit cards. And you can only open up two credit cards within a 30 day period. I don't recommend opening up a credit card every month, but if you really needed to open up more cards, then you can open up up to two cards within 30 days. Chase doesn't have a limit on how many cards you can have, but they will consider how much credit limit you have. So depending on your credit score, let's say they'll only allow you to have $10,000 across all their cards because you've opened up five cards and you do have already $10,000 that they give you, then they may have to move around the credit limit. So one card may decrease on the credit limit just so that they can accommodate the other card that you just opened up. Chase also has the 48 month and the 24 month rule. So you can only open up a new Sapphire card, whether it's preferred or reserved, every 48 months since you got that bonus. So just because you opened up a card, let's say in May, and then after 48 months in June, you want to open up another Sapphire card. Well, it's since the bonus, meaning if you opened up a card in May and you got the bonus in August, then you're going to have to wait until August, four years later, to open up another Sapphire card. You can only have one Sapphire at a time. So you can't have Sapphire Reserve and then 48 months later try to get the Sapphire Preferred. You need to either downgrade it or cancel a card, which I don't recommend canceling, before you get another card. The same goes for the Freedom cards. So the Freedom Unlimited and the Freedom Flex, 
has a 24 month rule, same idea, same concept as the 48 month. So depending on which Sapphire card you get, you either have to pay $550 out of pocket or $95 out of pocket to have this Chase trifecta of cards. So you have to do the math and see which is more beneficial for you. If I had to keep the Sapphire Reserve, it cost me $225 out of pocket fee to have these cards. And I say that because I deducted $300 travel credit for the Sapphire Reserve and I would use it every year in full because you can pretty much use it anywhere regarding travel as if it's like cash. There really aren't any limitations as long as it's used for travel. And with the global entry credit, I know you get $100 every four years, but we're paying the annual fee every year, right? So I only consider the credit to be worth around $25. I mean, four years, right? 100 divided by four. <laughs> so to me, that's why it costs $225 out of pocket to have these cards. And uh, I don't really think that's worth it. I mean, you do get 3X on travel, the 10X on portals and stuff, but uh, there's other cards that give you 3X on travel that doesn't require you to pay 225 out of pocket, but that's just my opinion. <laughs> Now, if you went the preferred route, it would be $95, but they give you a $50 hotel credit if you book through the travel portal. And I have used that $50 every year. And it's just one night, normally you can cover a hotel. Maybe it's an airport hotel, like before you go international, you have to sleep a night at the airport. That's like the most convenient way to use it. So that $50 is pretty easy to use. And that's why for me, my out-of-pocket cost would only be $45. So $45 I feel like is worth it for me. I don't mind spending $45 on three credit cards each year and to get the bonus categories on travel and dining and such. And to be completely honest here, I only really consider the Freedom Flex as like my heavy duty card usage card between the three cards because the unlimited is only 1.5x and I can get 2x with other cards. The Sapphire Preferred has low bonus categories in my opinion so 3x on dining is not bad but with other cards I can get like 4x or even 5x on dining so I don't really want to be using a card that only gives you 3x because that's kind of like a waste in my opinion so the freedom flex is the only card that i like max out every three months and to me spending 45 dollars is still worth it if i can max out the flex card now that's me and that might not be your situation so you have to do the math and see if that is worth it for you is it worth paying 45 dollars to keep these three cards. Chase also has a bunch of travel partners and I'll actually leave the travel partners linked below that you guys can just download it and see. But one of the most coveted transfer partner is I would say Hyatt with Chase and that's the whole reason why everyone has a Chase card in their wallet or keeps the Chase card I should say in their wallets because Hyatt currency is so valuable. Hyatt doesn't charge as much as Hilton or Marriott in terms of like points. And even though they have a smaller footprint in the world, people still love Hyatt. I'd say a lot of the time, people still put spend on Chase because of Hyatt and not necessarily other partners because you can get access to other partners with other banks. Like KLM and Air France is pretty common and they're transfer partners with like every bank you can think of. So it's kind of easy to accumulate points and transfer it. The only benefit here is you're trying to get as many points as possible from each bank by opening up a new credit card because obviously it's easier to get a lot of points through intro bonuses versus having to spend that much money because there's a limit to how much you'll be able to spend. But the intro bonuses is like where it's at. And so by getting all these credit cards, you can transfer it to airlines or hotels to get the max benefit. Because of the 524 rule, a lot of people say get Chase cards first before you're maxed out on that limit. And I kind of do agree because if you open up a card from a different bank, let's say, and you use that one slot up, then you can only get four Chase cards and you'd have to wait two years before you can open up another Chase card. And Chase has a lot of credit cards to offer and they're excellent credit cards. If you're new to the credit card journey, then you should start with Chase and max out Chase first before moving on to different banks. That is not to say that you can't open up other banks because everyone's situation is different. So 
in my case, I was living abroad at the time and so my first credit card was Amex because I needed a credit card that I could get for travel and restaurants and Amex had that category open for me and so having an Amex card was more beneficial for me than having Chase cards. So you gotta do whatever works for you. But in general, I would say Chase should be the first bank you look at. Anyway, I hope today's video was informative and helpful. If it did, please like and subscribe below and I'll see you guys next time with a different video. Bye!